It was the end of a long, tiring day, and Edward was puffing home with his last train. He was tired. However, the cold breeze and gentle glow of the moon kept him happy. As he backed into his berth, his driver spoke to him. We'll have an extra with us tomorrow on the footplate, old boy, he said. My son will be accompanying us. Edward smiled. He had always heard his driver talk about him but never had the chance to meet little Eddie. The next day, Edward woke up to find a pair of eyes staring back at him. Are you the engine that I was named after? asked the boy curiously. Are you the boy that was named after me? Edward asked, trying to be silly. Come along, Eddie, called the boy's father. The boy giggled as he clambered down and into Edward's cab. His father let him hold the whistle chain as they departed for Wellsworth. The boy stared in admiration as he watched Edward shuffle the trucks about the yard. He thought the blue engine was quite a splendid sight indeed. Later, Edward's driver called his son over. Eddie, he called, would you like to help me control Edward for a little while? Eddie was thrilled with his father's offer and skipped merrily towards the blue engine. Be easy now, he said as his son gently put the brakes off. We're moving, Daddy, we're moving, cheered the boy. Well done, Eddie, peeped Edward with glee. Eddie's laugh was so contagious that even the trucks couldn't help but follow suit, and the day continued on as normal. Soon, the clock struck tea time, and not a moment too soon, a new asked Edward's crew. However, Eddie didn't want to leave Edward behind. Daddy, may I stay with Edward, please? He asked with puppy eyes. Would that be okay with you, Edward? Asked the driver. Certainly. No need to worry. I'll keep an eye on the young lad, replied Edward sweetly. Very well. Be back soon, Eddie. Behave yourself. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Sydney, called Edward. Eddie sat on Edward's front, listening in amazement at all of his stories he had to share. Wow, he cried. I can't believe you took all those passengers home, even after all that. Indeed, replied Edward humbly. I was just as surprised as you are now. But it goes to show that no matter the obstacle, you must give it your all. Eddie was impressed. Well then, I'm going to rest a bit before my crew gets back. <sighs> you better go to your father now, Eddie. Edward yawned. Okay, he sighed, and hopped down, dragging his feet towards the station. Edward smiled, then shut his eyes and fell asleep. It was then that Eddie turned around and grinned as a naughty idea popped into his head. As quietly as he could, he walked back over to Edward and climbed into his cab. After watching his father operate the controls, he knew just what to do, or so he thought. He opened the throttle too fast. Edward began to move. Everything happened at once. The signal man saw Edward moving onto the main line, and at the last minute, he jerked the points to avoid a derailment. Edward's crew stepped out and ran towards their engine. Just then, they heard a whistle. They wished they hadn't. Edward woke up with a start as his driver put the brakes hard on. Quickly now, alerted the signalman. Gordon's coming through with the express. You'll have to outrun him. No use trying to back up now. You'd never make it. Without a second thought, the driver opened the regulator and Edward dug his wheels into the rails as sparks flew from either side. He careened down the line as his face became buffeted with wind, reaching speeds he never once thought possible. Hurry, Edward, hurry, called his driver. Daddy, I'm so sorry, weeped his son. We'll talk later, replied his father. Edward's fireman shoveled for dear life as Eddie looked back. 
he could see Gord hurbling towards them at the speed nearly matching Edward's. Whistling horrifically, he clung tightly to his father's leg and shut his eyes. Trembling in fear, they reached the next station, whistling frantically. The signalman seized up the situation, but not fast enough. Edward remained it on the main line. He sent a notice up the line to the next signal box. Edward began clanking dreadfully, but he wouldn't give up. I must keep going. I must keep going. He panted, trying to desperately catch his breath. <laughs> station came into view. Edward saw the points change, and his words came on with an ear-piercing screech. Everyone, hold on! He hollered. Eddie and the crew winced as they prepared for the worst. Edward swerved, rattling into the siding, breaking gently, then harder and harder, until at last, he finally came to a stop, just in time to see Gordon thunder by. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. They checked to make sure the line was clear ahead and made their way back to Wellsworth. When they arrived, Edward's driver scolded his son sternly. Now you go apologize to Edward this instant, he demanded. A sad little Eddie dragged his feet over to the worn out engine. I'm so sorry, Edward. He was cut off by tears streaming down his face. Edward felt horrible. There, there, he soothed. I know you didn't do any of this intentionally, and I forgive you. You do? Sniffed the boy, wiping his eyes. Of course, said Edward kindly. That being said, I trust you'll be more obedient and careful in future? He asked with a fairly strict tone. Eddie nodded in agreement and went to lie at Edward's front. Eventually, he fell asleep and was found curled up in a ball by his father. Come on, Eddie, he said. It's time to go home. As his father picked him up, Eddie opened a sleepy eye and waved goodbye to his new friend, Edward the Blue Engine.